It's probably one of the best rivalries in the city when it comes to the football field. Great cut up the middle. He's got some space. Slips a couple tackles. Rodriguez to the pylon for the touchdown. Excellent pass, but just as good a catch. Joel Pastrana will not be caught. Stopped at the three, kept on turning, and finally got into the end zone. Lambert breaks free. Jonathan Lambert up the middle. He's going to win the game. Throwing it up to Edsel Hall. Oh, what a catch. We've seen some amazing games. But that was, that was one of the best we've seen in a long time. Hey, hello, everybody. Welcome to Madison Park High School in Roxbury as we can continue our coverage of the 2017 BBS High School football season. This week, the Jeremiah Burke Bulldogs, who we saw with a big win last week against Boston English, will be taking on the Madison Park Cardinals. Hello, everybody. I'm Pat Flaherty. Join my partner, as always, Alan Platt. Alan, last week we saw the Jeremiah Burke Bulldogs win their first game of the year against Boston English. Certainly a very big win for them. It's also a Boston South win. Meanwhile, Madison Park, after winning their opening game, Got a pretty good wake-up call last week against right. the Mission. So these two teams, <laughs> one wants to continue what they're doing, the other one wants to kind of rebound from last right. week. Right. Well, so it's been like a seesaw, and we're only in, right. in what, third, fourth weeks, sure. so it's been crazy. Uh, <clears throat> and then we, this Early this afternoon, what was it, uh, O'Brien, who's had a tough time scoring this season, who lost to Madison. That's right. Turned around and beat East Boston, who we saw earlier this year, and they looked, uh, they looked very really good. good. Right. <laughs> so it's a strange start to this season, but that's, that's high school football for you. Without question, you never know what's going to happen. Meanwhile, for the Madison Park Cardinals, they come into the season losing a very good backfield last year. They oh. had two seniors who graduated and a young guy And they, who's, they, they who played moved. three years together. That's, that's the right. key. And then, so Roosevelt Robertson, the rest of his coaches, they, they've got to deal with a lot of youth. I mean, this, is, this probably is the youngest team he's ever had. That's he's right. been around 23, 24 years. That's right. Uh, I'm looking at the roster, only four seniors. And a couple of them don't even really play that much. So right. he's got a very, very young team to deal with. Yeah, one player who they're probably going to get the ball to a lot in this game is Ezra Howell, their running back number 32. He hasn't scored a touchdown this year on offense, but defensively he's a he had a 70 yeah. yard interception. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. the guy that they're going to feed the football to. No doubt about that. I mean, the Madison Prop, when you have a young team uh, all over the place, <clears throat> young uh, up, up front with the line, linemen, uh, Ezra, is, he's a junior. He has some experience playing, so they'll depend on him to keep that ground game going and hopefully kill a lot of time. Without question. Meanwhile, on the other side of the football, for Jeremiah Burke, we saw him last week, Pat Colbreth, one of the best runners in the city well, out of the quarterback spot. There's no doubt that it's going to be the Pat Colbreth show for the Burke probably the rest of the season. And <clears throat> for him, we saw him have like a slight muscle pull last last week, but he had some amazing touchdown runs. And then we found out in the uh, post-game interview that even though he, he thought he was going to sell out the rest of the game, he put his stuff, his pads and jersey and helmet back on uh, without the coach even knowing and got back in the game. That's right. So Pat Colbreth with three touchdowns last week at 181 yards rushing, and he was the guy that carried the football the most for this team. There were a couple other guys that got some touches, but it was Colbreth who was the focal point of the offense. There you see his numbers from last week. He had 18 touchdowns I'll last season. And he's, he's on his way. On his way to be doing <laughs> that again a, here in he's 2017. He's on his way. No so he's doubt a lot about of that. fun to watch. We saw him right. last week. We're going to see him here again tonight. Now for more on this game, we're going to go to our sideline reporter, David Souza, who's got an update for us just before we get going. David, what do you have? Thanks very much, Pat. Well, an interesting matchup we'll see today is going to be between Patrick Colbreth, the quarterback of Burke, and between uh, and between Brandon Henry, the defensive end here for Madison. Both players very elusive. Brandon Henry coming in on that defensive end position. Patrick, Patrick Colbreth rushing for three touchdowns last week, but he pulled up with a bit of a thigh injury, so we'll be interested to see how his mobility will be today. David, thanks very much, and that's a good point about that injury. We'll see how Colbreth is going to respond to that injury. Well, that's the key, definitely, for the, uh, for the Burke offense once they get the ball. And we are just about set to go here at O'Brien. They're in the all, or excuse me, at Madison Park. They're in the all maroon uniforms with the white trim. And here come the Cardinals on the return. Bringing it back up the middle of the field. Madison Park fumbles the, the football. And Madison Park does hang on to it. Looked like he actually had a little bit of a lane. So first down for Madison Park, and <clears throat> it's interesting, Pat. We talked about their youth. Yeah, and there you see the starters for Madison Park. Perez starting his first year at quarterback 
for the Cardinals. Running backs Howell and Holden. Receivers Austin and Brandon Henry. Matching in their traditional all maroon uniforms. The Cardinals on first down with the football right around the 30 yard line. And the handoff up the middle this time. Ezra? Yeah. And it looks like that's Howell chugging there his way go. forward. He lost the football. And did Jeremiah Burke recover? Yes, they did, wow. right at the 30. Seven yard line, so a good run there for Howell. Tough but you got to hang on to the yeah, football. That, that's <clears throat> that second and third effort looked like it was going to get him a first down, but he lost lost track of the ball. So the Madison defense have to go <clears throat> get right in the field, and they'll see Pat Culbreth right away. Watch, simple handoff, Howell, good run, but he had a at the end of that. I'm sorry, that was a. Kelvin Austin at the end of the play had the ball pulled out. So Austin with the fumble. Burke recovers at the Madison Park 38 yard line. Back to that wishbone offense. Three backs behind the quarterback. Colbert scored in the first possession of their game last week. We'll see what he does here. Scrambling for his life. Colbert looking to throw the football, but he's going to be wrapped up for a loss in the backfield. He's brought down right around the 41 of the 42 yard line. Good defense by Madison Powell. They put pressure on Colbert right away, forced him out of the pocket. Had him <clears throat> try to escape to the sidelines. But there you see, looks like his leg, his muscle may, may be okay because the escapability is right there. Loss of about three. They're the starters for Burke. Colbreth, the quarterback. Gante and Withers are the running backs. And the Francois twins are sort of wing backs where they have them listed as receivers, but they'll be carrying the football on the outside. Second down now for Burke. 13 to go. The handoff over the left side. So yeah, the interior defense for Madison Park in these first two plays representing pretty well. That was, that was a short game. Yeah, Ernst Clerson with the carry. Watch the front line, good penetration and very short game. It's gonna be like a third and, wow, almost third and 12. This is when we saw Colbreth also make some big plays well, with his legs. Thing. Third and long, and then we also saw a fourth down play by him. That's right. He scrambled for a first down. Well, one of the third down plays you're talking about was actually a pass <clears throat> called, but he was able to escape and then just took it to the house. Third and 12 now for Burke Colbreth. Rolling to his left. Escapes one rusher. Now tucks it in and runs. Colbreth still on his feet. Took he out steps of bounds. out of bounds, yeah. well short of the first I think he down. Lost, yeah, I think he lost track of where he was. He had the, uh, the marker in front of him, but he just couldn't. I think he couldn't keep his balance and just stay in bounds. Gets some pressure, but that defensive end's got to be able to contain him, not let him get out to the sideline. So he, like, he lost balance right there, stepped out of bounds. You see Coach Roosevelt Robinson in his 23rd 20, it was 23? season. Okay, yeah. I knew it, it was, was 23 or 24. Right, it was right around there. <laughs> you know, you talk to him and it's like, yeah, I lost count after about 10, so. It's been a long time. Yeah, he's been, been a great job here, though. I mean, because, he because he's had to struggle against uh, short numbers many years, been to Super Bowls. That's right. He's had the, the full gamut. Madison Park, the school itself, has changed a lot over the last decade as well. And that has affected the football program, but every year, we know Madison's going to be tough. They're going to run yeah. hard, and they're going to play hard for Coach well, Robinson. Well, Rob, what Robinson does, he, he always talks about teaching basics, how to tackle offense, correctly, how to block correctly, out. and obviously how to hustle. Okay. <laughs> and so he, he, his philosophy, and he, he's, he's really proud of it. You do those three things, you can play with us. Do you see the early motion by Burke to set them back five yards, and now it's a fourth and 12. That was number 55, Alan Montalvo, who jumped early. Now on third down, or fourth down, rather, it's Colbreth the block in the back. trying yeah, to find some yeah. room. We got a flag on the play. It's going to be a short block on the first the back. down anyway. Back. But 
I mean, the good news for the Brook is it, it looks like Culp is okay. I mean, he's run three times already and the, don't see any signs of a problem with that leg. Yeah, there's a flag right there. It was a pretty evident right. block in the back in the backfield. Definitely in the block in the back territory for that right. flag. So they saw that come up. Now this, uh, He's short of the first down. That's so. why. That's why. Well, but but the pro the thing with Mass and Proc is they they've got to decide. Got a block in the back on the right that's been declined. It'll be a first down. Right. Okay, so yeah, yeah Mass is gonna. That's a smart play. Yeah. So the turnover didn't hurt Madison Park as they'll get their offense back in the field. So Madison, after fumbling the football, they come up with a good defensive series. And they'll get a Perez, second crack at it yeah. here on their first possession. So Number second 12, Perez, he's uh, one of the four seniors on the squad. It's interesting, but we mentioned that uh, Madison beat O'Brien. Uh, it was the first, I think, first game of the season. Yeah, for Madison. But the right. key, the, is uh, Perez and what he's done in that game. Actually, yeah. what you were talking right. about, Alan. He had a 70-yard touchdown run against O'Brien two and it weeks was, ago. It was only it was a very low-scoring game, so uh, Coach Robinson was was just as proud of his defense to hold to hold O'Brien to just one score. Yeah, the Tigers were actually driving in to score. They had a chance expired. to end the and last play of the game. They had a chance to, uh, to to tie the game. You're right. So, goal line stand. That matter of fact, they had two goal line stands in that game. Not sure what the holdup is right now. I think one of the maybe Byron Beeman was talking to one of the referees, but I think they're trying to get the chains. Well, they got the chains going the wrong way right now. They're going to have to. Yeah, they got the chains sort of backwards. Once, once they, there you go. Now it looks like, like they're ready we to mentioned go. a lot. You know, a lot of times it's, it's volunteer high, uh, yeah, high one school of the hurt play. players. Yeah, sure. So first down now for Madison Park. Football at the their own 32-yard line, and they pitch it over the left side. Short gain on first down as Jeremiah Burke is able to swarm to the ball carry. Front lines for both teams in these first few minutes are pretty much controlling the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that was Ezra Howell. You see Howell just trying to find some room. Not, not much there at all. He actually got well, a little more than he should have, I think, there. Tell you, one of, some extra yards. Yeah, one of the good things for, um, good signs for the Burke is that Culberth is in there on defense. So... The magic of youth, right? Recovering in a week because he was really <laughs> hobbling around in that game against English. Of course, he ended the game well because he had the three touchdowns, but he'll be key today. Madison Park calls a timeout here early on in the first quarter. The scoreboard is not operating right now here at Madison Park, so we'll be relying on the referees for time. Talked about the brook with a nice win last week and <clears throat> getting on the you know, get, getting on the, the the win column and also getting a good sense of what they can do offensively. <clears throat> that was Im important for the coaching staff. Coach Bean was talked about that last week that he he liked the fact that some of his younger players were starting to really come through even though yeah. it's early in the season because you because you know your you, your seniors expect them to be consistent and you expect them to help teach the younger guys so they can grow as the season goes on. I think also at the beginning of the season you expect your seniors to be ready. There you to go. be ready yeah. to go. Oh, yeah. Whereas yeah. the younger guys they sort of don't know nervous, what little, it's like to be yeah. ready for a varsity high school football season. Sometimes it takes um, a little longer for the butterflies That's to go right. away. <laughs> <laughs> One good thing about these two teams is they each already have a win Right. This season, sometimes you see teams, you know, right now, certainly Boston English is having a tough time to start the year. You have teams like that who they go through the first couple of weeks of the season. They don't get a win. And now it's like it starts to really wonder this well, how long is this going to go right. on their shoulders? Like, when are we going to get a win? So these two guys already with a win under their belts. We'll see how they fare here tonight. Second down and eight now for Madison Park and the handoff over the right side. It looks like it was Howell again. Yeah. He thought he had some space. I'm sorry, that was Holden. 
on the carry. Sebastian Holden, the freshman. Yeah, he come, he, he gets put in the back. So they came out of this power eye formation. They had blockers in front, as you mentioned. Looked like he was trying to cut back. Grabbed short game. So it'll be third and a little more than, a little less than five, actually. Another third and four now for Madison. So that was about a three, maybe four yard gain on the play. They're on second down. Coach Robinson mentioned he's got a couple of freshman running backs. He has to play because of the numbers. Yeah, yeah. He's got to fit those guys in there. So we'll see how they fare tonight as well. Now on third down, it's Howell with the carry. And he is going to be well short of the first down. Probably lost yardage on the play. Well, again, we're talking about some young offensive linemen who <clears throat> Haven't really learned their techniques well yet, and they're not getting much of a push. Ball comes out late. So now the Cardinals are faced with a fourth and four as they gain no yardage there on third down. See if they punt the football. They actually did gain yardage, so it looks like it's about yeah, it's fourth, fourth, and, fourth two and two for the Cardinals. <clears throat> If they're in their own territory, let's see if they want to take a chance. A team like Madison, which prides itself on toughness and grinding well, the football, they sometimes, I think, think, hey, if we can't get two yards, then what are we doing? Right, well, that's the <laughs> Fourth and two now for the Cardinals. And the quarterback you got takes it, it yeah. himself, Alex Perez, with the carry. And Madison Park moves the chains here in the first quarter, the well, first, first down either, of the game. Either the coaches or maybe Perez himself saw something in that front line of the Burke to make them confident enough to go for this. All he does is lean forward, look for a gap. There you go, right there, slid right between. Two of the defensive tackles got the first down. But yeah, that's a good point you're making though about toughness. I mean, <clears throat> some confusion now in the offense, they're gonna call another timeout. Uh, Roosevelt Roberts, I think, like you're saying, he, if you can't make a fourth and two, all right, close to midfield, but we're still in our territory, you got to make, just just get out, get get the lineman, get a good thrust off, and, and the quarterback can do the rest of it. So another young timeout guys, here by Madison yeah. Park. Like you, like you mentioned, with all these young guys, timeouts are your friend. Well, <laughs> the thing about it is, I think, I think, quite frankly, some of the kids just forget the plays. You know, they forget the alignment, and Therese can't, you know, waste a whole huddle just showing guys where to go. Take the time out. You have a first down, chance to sustain this drive. And then to what what Coach Robinson will do, he'll just simplify things. He'll right. he'll probably <clears throat> stick with two or three plays. He may change formations, but he'll basically stick with a couple of running backs. I don't know if we'll see much passing tonight, but <clears throat> if the running backs can keep the chains moving, then they'll stay they'll stay with that. So you look at the Madison Park sideline and. One uh, person that you don't see or probably hear is, oh, probably, right, right. is probably the better way to put it is uh, Dennis Wilson. Dennis Wilson, a long time right. defensive coordinator. Defensive right. coordinator. He's the head basketball coach at Madison. Supposedly, Dennis is going to be retiring mm -hmm. at the end of this season from being the head coach of the basketball program, from what I'm hearing. So I think Dennis wanted to kind of dedicate this last year just to the basketball, the basketball program ball, yeah. and kind of step away from the football program. So certainly when you have a lot of young guys like Coach Robinson does, then you use it, lose an experienced they, assistant well, that's, coach that's, like Dennis. That's key. It does really make things key. a little harder. First down and 10 now for Madison Park from the 45 yard line. They pitch it over the right side to Howell. Ezra Howell now finds the edge. Nice cut. Gets down the right sideline, still, still on going. his feet is Howell. Stepped and he out stepped bounds. out of bounds, yeah. but a big time run from Ezra Howell. I'm glad we spotlighted well him in the open. <laughs> well <laughs> inside Burke territory. <laughs> we expected Howell to get the ball a lot. Watch this pitch, clean pitch, nice nice block up front. The freshman, number 11 for Madison, did a good job of allowing Howell to pop outside. Good cut in right there to get the first down. And again, on the sideline, just stepped out of bounds while he was still chugging along. And they mark him down at the 30, so that was a 25-yard run for Ezra Howell. And it gets Madison Park in Burke territory here in the first quarter. As we mentioned, no scoreboards. So we don't know how much time is left in the quarter. 
referees will be keep, keeping that down on the field. Well, Sebastian holding with that block from 11 for uh, Madison Park. Now on first Missed down, handoff. broken play yeah. as Alejandro Perez has to just fight for a couple of yards. That's what happens when you oh. have those younger guys, especially I think after you have a big play too, all the younger guys are all yeah, excited. excited. Good. And then the focus yeah. starts to wander a little bit. Well, he Perez did the right thing. I mean, he missed, he missed the, the timing was bad, so he missed the handoff. Just tuck it in, keep possession, and get whatever you can. So just a gain of a yard there on first down for Madison Park. It'll be second down and nine now for the Cardinals. Same formation that pitches to Howell again. Finds another nice lane. Gets it inside the 25, and they mark him down just after the 25. Yeah, Madison Prox found something on that left side of the defensive front. This, this, this is the same play he just ran for 25 yards. Pitch to the right. Good tackle, but like you said, he was able to get a decent, decent gain. Now, you know, if you have a third and five, you basically have two downs to get the five yards. Madison Prox sideline is happy with this. Keep Culbreth off. The That's right. <laughs> and his, his, his running, keep their offense off the field. Coach Robinson mentioned that last week against New Mission, Madison ended up losing 36 to nothing. They made a lot of mistakes, though. A lot of they mistakes. They made a lot of mistakes. Yeah. A lot of penalties, turnovers. A pitcher over the left side here. Good speed. Wow. On third down, and they definitely pick up the first down close to the 10 yard line. Getting the carry that time was Kelvin, Kelvin. Austin. Wow. He had a little burst of speed in the backfield. Watch this. Once he gets it, he sees the defender, but that step right there got him into full gear. Ran through an arm tackle. Good long strides. Easily get the first down. Yeah, Colbert had to bring him down at the tail end of that play. So. And that's another that's another ninth grader. That's right. Uh, another freshman Calvin showing Austin. off the speed. So Madison with the football now at the 11-yard line. Cardinals continuing this drive, now looking to punch it into the end zone. Staying in that power eye formation. First and 10 from the 11 for the Cardinals. A handoff over the right side to Howell. And he carries the pile wow. towards <laughs> the two yard line. He's deceptive. Line. It looks like when he's getting wrapped up, he just uh, he sort of steps out of the, 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 the defender's arms. Look, he look, it looks like he's hit around after three yard gain right there. Now he's just going to pop by that pile. <laughs> It add, add more yardage. So he gets it down to the two yard line. So I thought he might have gotten it to the one, but he's at the two. So they can get a first down and still not get it in the All end zone. Right. Coach Robinson, you can see he's firing up his guys, but he's got to be happy with oh, definitely. this drive well, right now. He is that. The fourth down play kept the drive alive. Our sideline reporter, David Souza's. Our sideline reporter, David Souza's, got an update for us. David, what do you have? Junior running back Ernest Clareson was being evaluated for a right ankle injury on the sideline. Trainer had, trainer had him up and walking around. Nothing appeared to be too serious, and word is he will return to the game. Thanks very much, David. The last yeah, thing you need is an injury. You already short-handed. Right. Yeah. Especially to a running back, but we'll see. Maybe if, that's why uh, we saw the freshman, but that was that was a good run. Yeah, we've seen both these freshmen, both Sebastian Holden. And Kelvin Austin now, they have a, they have a good burst. I mean, Howell's, Howell's the hard runner. You can Definitely. tell he's the bell cow of this team. He's going to be getting the, the ball in between the tackles. But those two freshmen, they get to the you, outside. They could break that's something. That's something to look look forward to. I mean, and the most impressive part to me for Holden was the block that he that he threw when Ezra was making the first, getting the first down. So Ezra Howell after that. Nine-yard carry on first down now has 50 yards so far here in the first quarter. So the Cardinals, after fumbling the football in their opening possession, they came up with a defensive stop. They got the football back right around the 38-yard line, their own 38-yard line, have driven it all the way down to the two. 
Second and one now from the two-yard line for the Madison Park Cardinals. Let's we'll see quarter, if they can punch it in. Yeah, that quarterback sneak might be there again. There and Perez does yep. get it here on first down. They try to push him towards the goal line, but he stopped short the Jeremiah Burke defense coming up on the goal line stand. Good job by the that middle of the Burke defense. He tried to slide the left side that time, but once he got stood up, all his momentum was gone. They was able to get held back. The injured Madison Park player. One of the linemen that, yeah, Vega, they're not, they don't have a lot of linemen. As a matter of fact, they had to move a couple of kids last week yeah, they lost, on the offensive line. Yeah. They, they lost a couple of linemen over the last couple of games. And now you have it's Vega, yeah. DG Amir Vega, yeah. the uh, junior lineman now down from Madison Park. Yeah, those those pileups, once they start getting pushed backwards, as you see Vega trying to Seems like he's all right. He's going to take at least one playoff. Yeah, it might have just been his wind or something, but he seems like he's okay physically. So yeah, the trainers <laughs> getting a lot of exercise. He's, he's coming back and forth across the field three times already. So Madison Park gained the first down on that run, despite not getting a ton of yardage. It's the fourth, fir fourth first down yeah. of the drive. Now first and goal from the one yard line for the Cardinals. Yeah, quarterback keeping the safest play in football. Perez with it again, and Jeremiah oh, yeah, Burke slipped, yeah, getting he, some penetration. He did. On that one, you could tell just from the, at the snap, his. His right foot slip took away all his momentum. Watch this, watch him. You'll see, you'll see him slip right there. And had no place to try to find it in the area. Must be the end of the first quarter. So Burke coming up with another goal line stand here at the end of the first quarter from Madison Park High School in Roxbury. The Cardinals are knocking on the doorstep, but Burke's trying to make a stand. We're going to head to break when we come back. We will have the second quarter here on Game of the Week with two Boston South rivals going at it. Madison Park and Jeremiah Burke. No score here in Roxbury. We'll be right back just after this. Green Red hat. Oops. <laughs> Red shirt. Blue shirt, <laughs> yellow shirt, oops. <laughs> Fantastic view here from Madison Park High School's football field in Roxbury. As you see the skyline there of Boston overlooking this Madison Park football field. The Cardinals tied up with Jeremiah Burke, zero apiece, but Madison Park on the verge. To punch it in <laughs> from the goal line. Well, you usually don't like to play around with handoffs, you know, miss, can have all kinds of miscues, but two quarterback keepers have not gotten them in but they are just at second down so they'll just gonna get a little bit of a push from the offensive line give Perez any kind of room to try to find a, a little bit of a gap we have seen that pitch to Howell work a couple of times so far well especially now the defense is in so tight the, you're right that 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 could be an option and they try with try Perez again, again and again uh, Jeremiah Burke hey, hey. Is coming up with a stop. Nowhere to go for Perez. This is starting yeah, to look Burke, like a rugby match. You, yeah, they, <laughs> Burke is doing a really good job. And they, so they're getting, I don't know if he's using the same snap count or what, but it looks, seems like the Burke is able to get off so easily. 
I think that was Montalvo getting in there really low, trying to push the pile back. Well, that's the key. Anytime you're in a goal line situation or a short yardage, the lineman who gets lower has more leverage. He can use his strength, use his legs. So the big fellas in there for Burke. Yeah, I think that was number 75 for uh, the Burke Bulldogs, Angel Pena, driving the pile back there on second down. Third and goal now for Madison Park. They Here's pitch the it to Howell for. again. Howell looking for the edge, and he's into the end zone yeah. for a touchdown. Ezra Howell punching it through for the Cardinals. They're on top, six to zip here early in the second quarter. Showing off your offensive coordinator skills, huh, Pat? <laughs> Take the pitch. <laughs> now you're right. This, this, this is the play they've been, they've been very successful with. Main thing is held on to the football. So the Cardinals do get the touchdown on third and goal. And it's interesting because I, I'm, I'm sure uh, Roosevelt Robinson has told his team, listen, we've got to keep the ball as long as possible and ideally score at the end of a long drive <laughs> because we don't want to – they know what Colbert did last week to English. So they, right. Madison Park does not want to give him uh, too many chances on the field. Cardinals now looking for the two-point conversion. And the handoff to Howell over the right side. He finds the edge and is in for the two-pointer. So yeah, Ezra Howell. Yeah, he has deceiving speed because a couple of times, that, and the, and even though that's, a, that's a, like a three-yard conversion, but watch, it looks like he's, they have the angle on him. He just steps right there. See, he just steps away. He's already in the end zone. You know, I, I don't want to say he's as good as this player. He does remind me a lot of their senior last year, Stefan Anderson. Oh, Anderson. the ground, and, yeah. kind of wide, really strong legs, moves, makes his way, you know, breaks tackles. I mean, we saw Stefan break so Yeah, many move tackles. a pile, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Very similar to that young man. So Madison Park finishing off that 13 play drive with a touchdown run from Ezra Howell. He also tacks on the two point conversion. They're now on top of Jeremiah Burke, eight to zip early in the second quarter. And for a team that lost 36 to nothing last week, That's it's gotta start. feel good to get that good, first oh, touchdown. Good start, really good start. And you gotta be happy because they, they did it on both ends of the field. I mean, they've got, they, they forced a fourth down <clears throat> for Burke had to turn the ball over on downs. And they made a fourth down themselves on that drive to keep it going. You know Culbert is just itching to get, oh, get his hands is. on the ball. As a matter of fact, he's back in, in to, to the receiving formation. So Perez kicking the football for Madison over the right side of the field, and Burke recovers at the 35, yep. sort of a sort of squib kick to the right side. Good field Cardinals. position for Burke, though, to start out. Well, Colbreth doesn't need much to break one. As Sebastian we saw last Pierre week. Louis, so he he recovered that. And it's interesting because the ball was it was, it was squibbing all out of on its way out of bounds, but he couldn't take the chance that uh, <clears throat> one of the Madison players wouldn't get there first. So he did the smart thing, covered it up, gives his offense good starting position at 30, 35 yard line. And if the football went out of bounds, I believe you get it either where it is or at the 50, right. 35, whichever one's yeah. uh, better for that. For the, for the receiving team, so they would have gotten it at the 35 anyway. So good play there by Burke to recover the football. Colbreth, as we mentioned before, 18 rushing touchdowns last season, and he had three last week, so he can score from anywhere on the field. And Burke was stopped by this Madison Park defense on their first possession of the ball game. We'll see how they do here in the second quarter. Colbreth fakes the handoff on the option play, now takes it himself over the right side. And there goes Colbreth to the outside. Glides out of bounds, well into Madison Park territory, right around the 44-yard line. That's like a delayed quarterback draw, because he didn't look to hand off to anybody and didn't even look down Washington, didn't even look downfield. It is definitely a quarterback draw. With his ability, quickness and speed, gives his blockers a chance, and then there's the freshman again. Get the tackle, but not until Colbert, that's a huge gain. 20-yard pickup there for Jeremiah Burke. First first down of the ball game for the Bulldogs. They were marked down at the 45-yard line. 
First and ten now for the car for the Burke Bulldogs. Now it's Colbreth taking it over the left side. Breaks one tackle, oh, nice breaks another. Fight. Nice cut back up field. Here comes Colbreth down the sideline. He's corralled at the 20 yard line. I tell you, a quarterback 40, that runs like a tailback. My goodness, 25 yard pickup for Colbreth. He just picks up those those big chunks of yardage each time he carries the ball. Oh, he can he can create so much. He has like <clears throat> looked like one of the the cornerbacks who came up. We'll see it again. Goes to me, I'm tackling right there. Just one little <clears throat> juke fake and steps around, and adds another 15 yards to the to the, uh, to the run. First and 10 now for Jeremiah Burke from the 20-yard line. The handoff to Gante. And Audriel Gante is wrapped up in the backfield. Deron Johnny yeah. coming up with the tackle. <clears throat> I'll tell you, that's that's a good tackle. <clears throat> Form comes across low, under control, right in the backfield. My apologies, that Use was Devontae Withers with the carry. Yeah. <clears throat> Use the strength to pull him down. You see a couple of fans here from Madison Park. Decent night here in Roxbury, especially compared to what we have we've had oh, the last yeah. couple of weeks. <laughs> it's a little it's gonna be a little bit chilly tonight, but clear skies and a nice night for football. So a two-yard loss in the play there for Jeremiah Burke. Second down and 12 now for the Bulldogs from the Madison 22. It's Colbreth again this time. Escapes another tackler. I thought he was gonna be caught in the backfield. Colbreth inside the 10-yard line. Another tough run for the Burke senior quarterback. Yeah, he's just has so, so much move. Watch, watch this movement, like you said. Looks like he's dead right there, but able to duck under that one. Another arm tackle. Finally knocked down. Key with trying to tackle a couple, but they've got to stay under control. You can't go for a, a, a big hit against him because he'll just slide by you. Third down and three now for the Bulldogs. A handoff. Yeah, Again, and this time nothing open there for Adriel Gante, who got Chris the carry Pierre that time. Came across. Watch 77. There you go. Just completely blew by the left guard there for Jeremiah Burke. So Pierre with the big stop there on third down. It's on fourth and four. Jeremiah Burke from the Madison Park 16-yard line, and we will oh, yeah, okay. surely see Cobb Pat Colbert. Yeah, Colbert's keeper, yeah. Probably another rollout. Fourth down for Jeremiah Burke. There goes Colbreth looking to throw the football. Oh, now really he's cutting giving back ground. up the other side of the field. Colbreth's got a lane. Pat Colbreth escaping some tackles. And he's wrapped up inside the five yard line right around the three. He gave ground, Pat, all the way back to the 35 yard line. But once he did that, he gave him some open space. The watch, he gets away from these defenders by just giving ground, giving ground. But once he gets started upfield, that's a combination of the speed, quickness, and his just agility. So first and it's going to be first and goal now for <clears throat> Jeremiah Burke. Colbert runs with a lot of patience as that, well. Yeah, the well that's, that's that, the key. that kind of speed, he, he kind of knows that, just. That combination is what makes it so hard to tackle him. You've got to be under control. So Colbert with 82 yards on the ground here in the first half. And See again, the best, to it here. best part for Coach Beeman is that he's showing no sign at all of a muscle problem with his leg. I mean, he was literally limping around last he week. He was, early in the game. As a matter of fact, because Burke had that lead, the two-score lead at halftime, uh, Coach Beeman had told us that he thought he was just going to shut him down for the game. But uh, once English got a score, made a one-score game, Colbert took, <laughs> took, put his stuff back on and said, I'm going back out there. 
Said enough of this. I'm getting back out there and doing something about this. Bulldogs now with a first and goal from the five yard line. Cold breath hands off to Audriel Gante, who is short of the goal line. They mark him down around the two. First time someone else besides Colbert's gotten a decent game. Watch Gante. Two hands on the ball. It's almost like the handoffs are to give Colbert the break. <laughs> so before they go, they go right back to him. Second down a goal now for Burke. The hander off to Gante, and again. He gets tripped up, yeah. He gets tripped up in the backfield. Good job that time. Cornell Mills coming yeah. up with his tackle. The senior defensive tackle for the Cardinals. Watch Mills. Gets inside. Got low. That's, that's the key. Got low, but under control and able to hold the Gante to no gain. Third down now. Coach Robinson hoping that his guys can make a goal line stand. Like we mentioned earlier, they had two of them against O'Brien in that tight win. Got to think Colbert's going to Yeah, I think this is the, the one you're, you're fake the handoff, let him, let him make something happen. You wonder if those handoffs to Gante was to set up this play here. They give it to Gante again, no, and this time he's bottled up. Piled up. Another good down. goal line stand here for Madison Park. Yeah, I'm a little surprised. I think both of us thought he was going to have the fake and let him get outside. Well, the thing with the option, too, is, you know, the, you're just making a off. read. So yeah, if the read right. is there, you make the handoff. But sometimes the you just wonder defense if you just did, want to call Well, run. the thing on this, these those last three down, downs, Madison's defense has been finding the ball very really well. Of course, Beaver wants to talk about it here. I wonder if he's just going to He wants to talk to his offensive lineman. He said, we got to get a push, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get a push. We saw Madison Park's offensive line when push came That's to right. shove. Yeah, yeah create those two or three yards that they needed to get a first down and to get a touchdown. And now Burke's got to do the same thing. Then you see Coach Robinson, he knows what his team has to do here on fourth down. This is the play right here that he's. And he's reminding them that they can do it. They've done it already this season. So let's, let's get more of the same. This is the kind of football Roosevelt loves to. Oh, without question. <laughs> With down, down in the trenches, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, yard here, yard there. That is Madison Park football at its finest. Meanwhile, for Jeremiah Burke on the other side, I mean, they're like, okay, we, we've we ridden Culbreth's legs all the way down inside the five, and now here we are fourth down, and it's about almost three yards. I'm sure that the Madison Park defense has been told, yeah, give us a good thrust, but Keep your eyes open and watch for the ball fix. You got to think the outside linebackers and safeties oh, are yeah, the ones that are going to be looking at the Defensive end, the, yep. the linebackers, right. Watch either corner. Yeah, this would be a huge goal line stand for this young Madison Park team. If they could come up with one more stop here. Fourth down and goal for the Burke Bulldogs. Trailing Madison Park eight to zip here midway through the second quarter. Colbreth fakes the handoff, cuts it in himself and he will glide in for the touchdown. Jeremiah Burke on the board for the first time tonight off the Colbreth three yard touchdown run on fourth down. Yeah, it's just a matter of making, creating some space for him to work. Fake handoff right there. Cut inside. Dion, that, that play at defensive end, just uh, Brandon Henry just gave a little too much room. He used to do his job, came across straight to, to not allow Culbreth to get out to the sideline, but sometimes you just give a little too much room, let Culbreth cut inside. And with his ability, you saw him jump into the end zone. 10 play, 65 yard touchdown drive there from Jeremiah Burke. They will now try to tack on the two-point conversion and try to tie it up here at eight. Right 
Once again, Burke goes with that wishbone formation. And it's Colbreth this time. Looked like he was trying to there throw the football, but Brandon Henry. Yeah, Brandon, so that time Brandon came the... across exactly right. Again, so you, it, it, you get excited, you come across in an angle inside, you get beat on the outside. That time, he, he, learned, he, he learned in a matter of seconds <laughs> because the <laughs> touchdown play, he gave too much room that time. Just enough to be under control and not give Colbreth any, any lane to cut back. Now Henry coming off the field a little shaken up. It's like he might have got banged up on that play. Yeah, he, they both fell. I mean, he made the tackle, but they, uh, both he and Colbreth, so it took a hard fall to the turf. A good play to uh, keep Mass and Parker ahead in the game. So Jeremiah Burke unable to tie it up here midway through the second quarter. Folks, if you want to follow us on social media, you can certainly follow us on Facebook. Search for Game of the Week here in Boston. A lot of good stuff up, uh, up on our Facebook page. You can also follow us on Twitter at Boston City TV. If you want to tweet at us, use the hashtag Boston G O W. So after Burke was denied the two-point conversion, they now trail by two here, eight to six, just about midway through the second quarter. And Madison Park currently with a two-point lead. I'm sure they'd love to get in maybe one more score before halftime. They feel the football right around the 45-yard line. Good return. Yeah. Pushing his way up to the 47. Hey, Singleton, Antoine. Antoine Singleton, another tight end defensive end here for Madison. That's the key. He's a, he's a sort of a skill guy, so he, he was confident to catch that even though it was a squib ball. These are, these are tough to pick up. See how it's spinning like that. He did a good job to corral it, then tack on almost, almost 10 yards, get the ball close to midfield. When you talk about numbers, Pat, and they look at the sideline now. Those kids in uniform, they're so small. You know they'd they, oh, yeah. they be JV players. Without question. Okay? And Without question. no expectation at all to get in the game, but you've got to have someone on the sideline sure. <laughs> in uniform. And sometimes you just need bodies, you know? <laughs> And Co Coach Robinson mentioned that. He they said, got a good spirit, too. They, they definitely have good spirit. And one thing Roosevelt said, too, was, I don't have any guys on this team with, with attitudes. Not they, at they all. Come positive. That's right. He said, sometimes in football you need a couple of guys with right. some attitude. Well, but he, he, he said, you know, these, these kids are very coachable. It's well, that's just, the it's key. Just take some that's time. the key. They want to learn. They want to get right. better. Cardinals now with the football at their own 47 here on first down. The hand up to Howell up the middle again. He gets about to the midfield. Yeah. So he picks up three on first down. Yeah, quick handoff. First man through. Stood up, all gang tackling. Both teams actually, a lot of, a lot of gang tackling getting to the ball. You know, a point you made earlier, Pat, about uh, Madison and Park getting blown out last week, uh, and they made a, a lot of mistakes. Right. So I think Coach Robinson probably used that as inspiration. Like, we lost the game, lost bad, but we only got shut out because we I mean, we kicked ourselves. Up. You know, we made all of our mistakes, fumbling the ball, turnovers, right. drop passes. All, everything happened. And those fueled the, the, the scoring for new mission. On second down, it's Perez. Rolling to his right, throws it over the middle of the field, Ooh. and it's almost intercepted as actually Perez I tell you, you know what that your your freshman there, Sebastian Holden, turned into a defensive back to That's knock right. that ball down. You see, <laughs> you see saying, how saying, did I not pick that off? Well, he didn't get it because watch you guys. Eleven is the receiver, the freshman. He's going to turn into a defender once he sees the ball close to the culprit. See right there, gets his hand in there to knock it out. I tell you. I, Robinson has to be excited about these guys. I mean, yeah, <laughs> we've seen these two, these two freshmen. I mean, they're they're sticking their nose in there. That time you you had Holden double covered. He's sort of an undersized uh, little freshman, but he's uh, always fighting for the ball. So after the incomplete pass, it's third down and seven now for Madison Park with the ball at midfield. Perez again back to throw, going down the right side. Brian He's Henry. got a man, but it's a little too yeah. far. Brandon just had. For the tight end. Yeah. I think that might have been 
Duran Johnny. That was Johnny? Or okay. Johnny Duran. Johnny Duran, okay. Yeah. And Perez will learn that time he had more time than he realized. Good blocking, good protection. He let it go a, maybe a split second too early because, like you mentioned, Johnny was just about to run away from the defender. I think that was Brandon Henry. Yeah. That's my. Yeah, my the 88 there. and 86 is oh, tough so to see. Especially with those silver numbers where the outline is white. Let's not forget now, most of the Madison Power Kids are playing both ways. That's right. Because they're, um, they're just so shorthanded. So fourth so down fourth and seven and, now for yeah. Madison Park with the ball at midfield. They pitch it to Howell over the right oh, side. Wow. A lot he, of room for room Howell. There. And he's chopped down right around the 44. It, he's going to be the short mark, of the first down. The mark is going to. I think he's going to be about a yard yeah, short. Wow. That was a nice open field tackle by Colbert. It really was because it looked like he had it easily. To watch him, not really a cut, just go to the sideline. Like you mentioned, a good job by Colbert to come up. See Colbert make that tackle. Coach Beeman actually thinks, you know, if Colbert is probably going to play college football with his talent. He might be well, better he's a safety. to play he's a, he's a safety, and then sometimes, depending on who they play, they'll put him in the corner right. to do, if there's a really good receiver they're going against. So you're right. He's and we he have good instincts like that. We've already seen his, his, his ability. He could he could easily be like a punt returner. Uh, could be a safety so, corner. Sort of one of those slash players right. on both sides of the ball. Jeremiah Burke takes over at their own 44-yard line. We believe it's late here in the second quarter, as we mentioned. No time on the scoreboard. Referees keeping time down on the field. And on first down, it's Colbreth looking for a crease, but he no is wrapped surprise. up in the backfield. He fumbled the football, but Burke did recover at the 40-yard line. Withers there on the recovery. Colbert, this is his favorite play. Sweep. And again, good job. Henry forced him back inside. That's all you want to do. So no gain on the play on first down. Second down and 10 now for, excuse me, they lost about they lost, three, oh yeah, they four lost yards. On four yards play. in the play. Second down and 14 now for Jeremiah Burt. After the fumble, the ball bounced. Deeper in the backfield. Cole Breath, oh, wow, they're all over him. In the backfield that's, again. <laughs> talk about a jailbreak. I mean, yeah. Christian <laughs> Sierra again getting penetration. That was supposed to be a screen, but even on a screen, you got to chip. You got to at least chip the defensive lineman. Like you said, Pierre, that was a straight sprint to Colbreth. Wow. Excellent play. Oh, he's going to make it, what, a third and about 20. Marked him down at the 33. So it's going to be third down and about 21. Make that 20 for Jeremiah Burke. And one third down for the Bulldogs. And again, it's Colbreth oh, wrapped up in the really backfield one more time. It's incredible. Brandon Henry again. We're used to seeing Colbreth breaking it's off escape. long runs. Right, right now, he's just being bottled up by the Cardinals. Well, as a, as a design passing play, Henry came across, and you saw him a little bit of a stutter to stay under control. He was able to wrap up Colbreth, and that's going to be halftime. <laughs> so a big-time play there from Brandon Henry to end the half for Madison Park as they leave the field with a two-point lead over the Jeremiah Burke Bulldogs, 8-6. to six. And Coach Robinson's got to be happy, especially with his defense. He I mean, laid it. <laughs> you know, that second, happy is not the word, Pat. Right. <laughs> you come up with 38 nothing, and oh, you, play, you play a half like that against a team who just controlled English last, last week and won pretty easily. Right. Yeah, you're really happy. Without question. You see, you know, the defense make a couple of stops. They obviously give up the touchdown on that second possession by Jeremiah Burke. But that last possession and the first possession, oh. I mean, especially All you, know, defense. You, see, you see Madison, they fumble the ball on their first That's a downer right there, the but the kids didn't put their heads down. Right. Yeah. They lined up that defense well, made a bunch of stops, and they were able to hang on to their lead coming into the half here. Now the head coach 
of the Madison Park Cardinals. Uh, Coach Robinson is down on the field with our sideline reporter, David Souza. So, David, take it away. Coach, with the exception of maybe one drive, your defense doing a great job of containing Patrick Colbert. What's been the key to success on that end? Uh, again, you know, if they want to tackle, we can stop him. You know, um, he's a very talented athlete, and he's quick, very elusive, and uh, we're just trying to grab a hold to him and pull him down because he's very elusive, which is good. And your offense has shown signs of driving the ball downfield pretty well. How do you keep that up in the second half? Um, well, we're all young, all new positions. Um, I have freshmen back there playing, and so they're trying to get together. Not so bad. The line is playing okay, so we'll hopefully the second half we'll get some things together and sustain another drive, and we're just a play at a time. And what are some improvements you guys can make going into the second half? Uh, just some of the mistakes. My quarterback's a little flustered right now. I'm just trying to settle him down, you know, to get what he has to get done. And I think he'll be all right after I get in here and yell at him a little bit. He'll come <laughs> out. He'll play a lot better. All right. Thanks very much. Back to you guys. Thanks very much, David. Coach Robinson, I'm sure getting yelled at by Coach Robinson. Well, I was just, just going to say, we, we, we sort of saved uh, Perez a little bit <laughs> for having <laughs> the interview with, with Robinson. Robinson. Right, right. right. But, 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 but Robinson, he, he, he'll yell, but he'll be smiling because, sure. he, like you said, he, he's got to be happy with the effort. Uh, he, he keeps mentioning freshmen. It's true. It's tough to all of a sudden you know, thrust a bunch of freshmen into starting varsity positions. But that's exactly what he's done. And uh, his, his yelling uh, obviously works because these kids are playing hard. Without question, very good first half there for both squads, but especially Madison Park, who now has a two-point lead. We'll see what kind of adjustments these two teams can make. Now, we've seen Jeremiah Burke now for two weeks in a row. They're obviously out of the neighborhood of Dorchester, and Dorchester has a very rich history in sports, but there's one very special sports program that's going on in that neighborhood over at the Dorchester Boys and Girls Club, and we're going to take a look at that story right now. Glance, this might look like a local summer camp with kids moving to the beat of a bucket drum, playing colorful group activities, and competing in a game of musical chairs. So you see that these buckets at the Boys and Girls Club of Dorchester are used for more than just instruments and recreational furniture. Good shot. These buckets are an integral part of the Martin Richard Challenger Basketball League program that provides physically and mentally challenged youth with a chance to enjoy the benefits of playing the game of basketball. Thanks to the success and popularity of the Martin Richard Baseball League, which was created in the spring of 2014, players and parents saw room for more sports on the challenger level. Initially, uh, a great member of the community, Brenda McDonough, uh, worked with us at the Boys and Girls Club to found Project Bind, which serves children of all abilities. We think that's really important, a great need in the community. Uh, and then it led to uh, the Challenger Baseball program down at Savin Hill Park, uh, and it took off from there. We realized that the families and the children got so much out of it uh, that we needed to think about doing something for every season. Parents asked for more. They wanted to have another sport. They enjoyed it so much that they really wanted to do something else. So we started the soccer program and partnered with the Richard family to create the Martin Richard Challenger Sports Program. And they wanted to have four sports. So that's how basketball was created. Each Sunday during the winter months, Challenger players pile into the Boys and Girls Club of Dorchester to learn the ins and outs of the game of basketball much like they've done on the baseball diamond. As we did dribbling, we did a cone, we run around, we, we play an intense game, we like get pennies and we like put them on different teams. We do one-on-one -on -one, like dribbling and passing and shooting and we teach them just like the basics of basketball and let them have a lot of fun. But with a different sport comes different challenges. So along with the basic basketball skills and scrimmages, the Martin Richard Basketball League also incorporates other recreational activities. We really try to create um, activities for the kids for them to have fun and to constantly keep them moving because we're also inside. It looks different than baseball when you're outside and there's more room to move for the kids. Ross Lilly is the executive director of Adaptive Sport America. So Ross will come in with his team and he thinks of fun ways to keep the kids moving and to make sure that they're being included and to make sure that every kid is able to access the sport. He made the um, basket 
barrels, basketball barrels if you want to call them for us, because some of our kids weren't able to reach the nets because of mobility issues. He uses the drums and musical chairs as a way to inspire the kids and have fun. You know, music is something that um, sort of all kids kind of um, are drawn to, and it's a way to get their attention to keep them moving. So putting fun activities in with the sport really helps the kids engage more with the sport. Despite the addition of these unconventional drills, the principal concept of the buddies in the Challenger League remains the same, with friendships being formed both on and off the court. Isn't that something though, that, the buddies? Uh, that's a whole other aspect of the program which um, is pretty amazing. So we have volunteers from the community and they pair up as buddies uh, with the participants in the program. First of all, uh, the participants are getting a new friend uh, which is a great thing. The buddies uh, are definitely learning how to work with children who have varying needs. We want them to get to know each other. We want them to somehow form some kind of a friendship. So if they're at the supermarket and they see their buddy, they're giving each other a high five now. You know, we're all in the community together to show that, well, now I see this, this kid, he's a player, I've been supporting him on Sundays, playing basketball, playing soccer, playing baseball. Now I see them in the community and now I appreciate all the strengths that he has. The family who has a child with a disability, to be able to see someone in the neighborhood to now have um, that person say hi to their child, it, it's, it really means a lot to the family. Basketball, I'm just horrendous. I just dribble the ball around. But there's not a lot that you need to know about the sports to be able to coach it. I mean, you know, once you get the drills down and things like that, um, it's you know, a lot of opportunity to get to know kids, get to know the buddies, and, and meet people that are, you know, interested in something similar. My buddy Lidiani, she likes to talk about her hair, she likes to talk about movies like Frozen. Um, she, she talks about anything. It's a really humbling experience to get to see them, like how much fun they have and how proud they are of themselves because, you know, it gives them an experience they otherwise might not have gotten to have. We sometimes we socialize about stuff like colleges or whatever, or we like talk about things related to basketball. But perhaps the greatest joy during this experience comes from the Challenger players' parents, who pack the stands at the Boys and Girls Club each week to watch their kids play a sport that once seemed unreachable. The program's for the kids. That's why we designed this program. That's why it exists. But what the parents get out of it, it's absolutely amazing. A lot of them never thought they'd see their child participate in a sporting event, and all of a sudden they're playing sports year round, and, uh, and it means so much to them, it really does. I hear very often firsthand from the parents, they're so thrilled and grateful um, that their kids have the opportunity. As a parent, it really makes you laugh when you see them doing it, just because it's fun. It's fun stuff, very basic things, to teach them some very basic skills, how to get along and to be good friends. While the Martin Richard Challenger League has spread across multiple sports, league administrators believe the growth of this essential sports program has just begun. And for the MR8 Foundation to continue its mission of providing all of our youth with the chance to play sports, supporters will look to extend the league's reach well beyond the neighborhood boundaries of Dorchester. Well, the Richard family um, really wants to be able to grow the Martin Richard sports program into other um, neighborhoods, into other states, you know, really to have it go across the United States. So it's something that we're working with the family right now to build um, a toolbox, to build some kind of a kit where if there's someone from another neighborhood who wanted to do um, any of either one of these sports or all of these sports, we're working on um, building this toolkit right now to be able to give this to another neighborhood um, so other folks can do what we're doing as well. There you have it, the MRA Challenger Basketball League. A lot of smiles at that program over at the Dorchester Boys and Girls Club. A lot of kids who probably wouldn't have the chance to play basketball able to play basketball at that facility. Oh, yeah, and enjoy it also. You saw a lot of smiles, a lot of <laughs> running around. So it's, that's a good exercise. Also, at the beginning of the piece, so they talked about the camaraderie and how that's right. they become friends. And so when you see each other in the neighborhood, you know, you, you, you talk, you say hello, and... So it, it, it helps to bring people together. Without question, you see a lot of different people from Dorchester participating in that program. Very good stuff. Let's take a look at the halftime stats here from Madison Park High School in Roxbury. And first up, we're going to take a look at Jeremiah Burke. Watch Burke. You have uh, Culberth, of course, 83 yards. 
10 carries and their their lone score so far. Guance, they really bottled him up three yards on three carries. No passing at all yet for Culbreth. Yeah, Guante had 50 yards last week, just three so far here at the half. Yeah, for Madison Park, ground it, ground it out as Howell, 62 yards with 10 carries. He has a touchdown. And then Anson, 14 yards on his one carry. They did try two passes. Uh, Perez, just like Robinson, Coach Robinson said, he wants to settle them down. Uh, no completion so far. Just right ready to start the third quarter, but we got some highlights of Pat Colbreth from the first half. We'll see if we can take a look at some of those. And a lot of what we saw last week, we're seeing oh, again this week. No doubt. I mean, he's his escapability, then he knows how to get downfield. And But this this, this is an amazing play here. This, this is on a fourth down, actually. He was able to get a huge gain and keep their drive alive. This time he almost got hit in the backfield, gets away again, 15, 15 yard drive. <clears throat> See like you said, he likes edge. he likes to he sort of glides. Like you yeah. said, you call you called him a patient runner earlier, and that's exactly what he is. You know, allows his teammates to set up their blocks. But, but he knows how to finish strong. I mean, even now that that on the touchdown, let's not forget the touchdown was on a fourth down play. Obviously, give it to him, uh, fake handoff, and then allow him to find some space and create something to get that touchdown. I think, but you know, the, if you look at it, though, eight-six game, obviously close, but this is so far more of a Madison Park type of game because I'm, I'm, I'm sure Coach Beeman on the opposite side is a little frustrated, thinking that <clears throat> his team would be able to have more offense against this Madison Park team and have have a lot more than six points by now. This is without question Madison's pace so far here in this one, but Burke does get the football to start the second half. We'll see if Colbreth can go back to work as he fields the kickoff right around the 30-yard line. Colbreth now trying to reverse field, and he breaks a couple tackles again. Now Colbreth's got some room. Colbreth All back right. up the left side of the field. Here yeah, goes Pat one Colbreth. One man to beat. Holding to beat. He's holding, able to catch him. He's finally forced out of bounds wow. right around the 12-yard line. Pat Colbreth with a heck of a return. Oh, that was something. <laughs> you talk about giving ground, giving ground. You know, coaches hate to see that, but the player knows the kind of speed he has, and he's watching the angles right here. He's giving ground all the way back to the 23-yard line. But once he gets the open field, a little bit of a cut right there, gets a big block. Like you said, Holden trying to run him down. And it was Perez, Perez actually, yeah, Perez down. chased him down. Finally, it was Howell who Howell saved a touchdown out of, out of bounds, on that tackle. They are set up. How would you say, point blank? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, he, Pat, he was down here at the 23-yard line. <laughs> I thought he was dead to rights, too. You saw a couple of Madison Park players ready to wrap him up. And the Madison Park has got timeout. Oh, I think those kids need a, need a breather, first of all. Oh, I mean, more than anything good. else. And they're frustrated because they knew that you know they, they come into the game knowing that Culbert's the guy. He's the one guy we've got to stop. It's just so difficult to try to corral him. Definitely a tough player to corral. He's been in the fun, probably the funnest player we've yeah. watched so far this season. Let's take a look at the Boston South standings. Well, that's the Boston North right now. We'll take a look at that first. Boston North, the CAC Tech Boston off to a good start as usual. This is before this the game earlier today. Right, East right. Boston actually lost to O'Brien. That doesn't affect their league standings, but overall they're now two and two. Brighton one and two. Uh, they played two teams from, I believe, out of town. So mm -hmm. oh, they mm -hmm. took on Cathedral, league, another right, team right, out of right. league. So they just are one and zero oh in the Boston North. I think that'll change over the next couple of weeks as Brighton has always been near the top of the standings. There you see Westy we saw last week or two weeks ago two weeks rather, ago. Right. and then O'Brien who got a win today against East Boston, huge win for them. And Latin Academy just one win, and that's against Boston Latin School. Let's take a look at the Boston South standings, and they see Charlestown at 2-0 mm -hmm. this season. Very good start for them. Jeremiah Burke right now at 1-1, one one, playing tonight. New Mission at 1-2 after beating Madison last week. Madison 1-1, one one, leading Burke here tonight right now. Excel, South Boston High at 1-1, one and, one, and English at 0-3 right now coming into this week. So we'll see if English can maybe pick up Front a win this week. first win. All right. Should be interesting to see how this I mean, standings just, unfold. It, this has been a, so far. This, this has been, a, this very been so crazy strange. Game. It's been, it's a bizarre. I mean, we saw East Boston; they were overly impressive, with, oh, yeah. especially with their offense. 
uh, that against West Rossbury. We saw this Burke team last week, uh, they actually left some points in the field because of penalties. That's right. So uh, what a two-score a two score game could have been a, a much wider score. And then, uh, like we said earlier today, O'Brien, uh, in a bit of a surprise, beat East Boston. Now on first down, Colbreth oh, flips it over to the right open. side to Gante. Gante. Makes one man miss. Gante still on his feet. Touchdown, yeah, nice Jeremiah cut. Burke. Good job all around. I mean, again, Madison Park so concerned about the running of Colbreth. Allowed Gante to just sneak out of the backfield. It's a bit of a screen pass. Got to like his little, his little cut right here. Cuts back inside of Perez and just is able to just get into the corner of the end zone to give Jim Burke their first lead of the game. Obviously set up by that <laughs> fantastic kickoff return by Culbreth. That's only going to help Burke's offense, too, because now you go away from the, the rushing part of, of Culbreth's game. He throws a passing touchdown. Now they're going to be looking for the pass, that's and right. he's going to come Madison right back with now, the now they're going to that's a back, keep backing up, backing up. Okay, right. which is it? Now the two-point conversion. The Burke can't hang on to the footballs. They have a botched open. handoff. Oh, it's too bad because it was open, too. That's the same play that Culbis has been faking the handoff and keeping himself, but that time he actually made the handoff, but ball hit the turf. Yeah, Peter trying Francois. Peter, one Peter of the was trying to get that, and I think Peter saw the opening there. <laughs> Just couldn't, couldn't pull the ball in. So, so after the, the brilliant score, yeah. kickoff no. return for Pat Colbreth, and they tack it on with a touchdown reception from Audrey Algante, and now Jeremiah Burke on top, 12-8 to over Madison Park. Our sideline reporter, David Souza, has got an update for us. David, what's happening? Thanks, guys. Patrick Culbreth doing it with his arm this time in the Madison Park huddle during the timeout. They opted to go with the 4-6-2 defense, stacking the box because they know how elusive Culbreth can be on his feet. He re read the defense well and did it with his arm this time and six more points for the Bulldogs. Back to you, Pat. Thanks very much, David. Good point by him. As he mentioned, they sort of loaded the box up right. and then opened things up in the passing right. game. Jeremiah Burke set to kick off here early in the third quarter. Madison has to be alert because Burke might squib this. They do squib it sort of over the right side. It's fielded by Madison Park. We got some speed. Whoa. Over the left side. Whoa. This is a good run here by Howell. Ezra Howell with a good kickoff return of his own down to the 35. I tell you, this second half is opening up pretty wide. I tell you. <laughs> Avante Withers prevented that from being a touchdown. He stayed it where he was supposed to. He's the, the last man, number six. You'll see him on the angle, left side of your screen. Gets right to that sideline before Ezra gets there and prevents him from going all the way. So two exciting kickoff returns here in the third quarter. We mentioned Howell as being that sort of inside the tackles runner. He showed off oh, a first right speed. there. Oh, definitely. And, and what I like about it is he was patient enough to allow his teammates to get blocks to get him to the sideline. And now Madison wants to answer. Now one first Fumble. down. Oh, yeah. Perez fumbles the football. That was going to try his to knee take was it down. himself. Yeah, his knee, his, when he went to pick it up, his knee was already down. A little over anxious with the center quarterback snap. So Madison actually lost a yard on the play. It'll be second down and 11 now for the Cardinals. Overall, really competitive game. I mean, the game started out. The defensive lines for both teams were controlling that first quarter. That's right. Saw some scoring a little later on, and here we are. So far, these first two possessions <clears throat> look like this. It looks like the teams have opened up the, the playbooks a little bit. Now the handoff over the right side. It's There's a freshman. Holden, and he is form nice tackled tackle. right around the nice line of scrimmage. Tackle. That's wow. Withers coming up with the stop. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how 
that score excites you so much. I mean, this, <laughs> you got the Burke defense really flying around now. Looks like there's some room on the outside when he, when he cuts outside. We're watching coming up from the defensive backfield and perfect tackle. Took away all the forward momentum. Looking at third and what? Third and nine? Yeah. Oh, yeah, third and nine. Third and nine, third and ten for the Cardinals. They pitch it over the left side, and here's Holden trying to find some space down the left sideline, and he is drilled out of bounds that time by Colbreth. So both Withers and Colbreth coming up and making stops for Burke, and now it'll be fourth down and seven. Madison Park surely will go for it. Get a holding penalty on Burke, which I'm sure will be declined. But I picked it up, okay. I, li I like him though. You can tell as, as a freshman, to give this kind of effort, boy, those are the kind of players as an offensive coach you really want to work with. Yeah, Madison Park went for a fourth down on their touchdown drive, and not surprised here because they just don't want to give the ball back to Culpeth. Fourth and seven now for the Cardinals. Perez again back to throw. Now going to scramble. Escapes one tackler. Perez trying to get to the sideline. Nice cut. He, he got does it. get the yeah. first down. Makes his way past the 25. Individual effort by Perez. Thought he was going to be sacked, actually. Ducked under that. Watch this replay. Watch him duck under the, the, the possible snap, sack, then gets out to the sideline. Once that... It's open, telling his teammate hit a block right there, which he does. <laughs> allows uh, Perez to spin into the first down. Big play. You gotta let uh, Coach Robinson taking the chance too, because uh, he knows we have to keep the ball as long as possible. That's right. Keep that Burke offense off the field. Even though it's chancy, because if, if they didn't make it, they give up great field position. But you gotta, gotta sort of roll the dice on that one. Perez picks up the first down for the Cardinals. They get back to their tight formation. They have the football at the Burke 29 yard line. Make that the 24, excuse me. They got the freshman on the wing this time. And Perez now on the quarterback keeper trying to get to the outside, but Gante is there yes. for the stop. Big time loss there on first down for the Madison Park. Yeah, trying to catch Burke. Uh oh. Crowd in the middle. Looks like uh, Perez. Went down hard on that left knee. That is not the guy that you can lose if you're a Madison Park. See if Stumble is coming it. out, trying to get to the sideline. Nowhere to go is Gonsay. Look, oh, yeah, right there. He actually, uh, you can see how he twisted it a little he bit. He twisted it a bit as he was trying to plant to get away from Gonsay. Getting up. He yeah, is walking it off. Trying to run now. He's, he's, I don't think he's coming back in. That is a very tough loss for Madison Park. Isaiah Miller, the freshman, is going to come in and play quarterback for well, Perez. We've been talking about freshmen all night for Madison Park. And well, <clears throat> I mean, if, they, if there's a a brace available that possibly could get Perez back in. He is sort of stretching it out, yeah, so I don't think there's any. Well, again, the, the, he'll get checked out by the trainer. <laughs> but it's, uh, like you said, this could be a huge loss. So now with Miller in at quarterback, the freshman, it's second down and 15 for the Cardinals. And they hand it off on first down. And Howell with nowhere to go. Yeah, at this point, 
the Burke defense knows with the freshman coming in at quarterback unexpectedly, <laughs> they're not going to do anything fancy at all. Just a two-yard gain on that play, so it'll be third down and 13 now for the Cardinals. See, unfortunately, the, the, the formation gives you a way, too, because it's a tight formation uh, So because you, you need maximum protection for blocking. So it's like... It's almost like you're telling the Brook, okay, we're going to run the ball to the, to the right, or run the right. ball to the left. <laughs> <laughs> no way we're going to throw it. <laughs> That's the tough thing about having these, these rosters, the short rosters with oh, only 20-something yeah. guys. You have one or two injuries. and Everything is thrown off. Without question. Third and 13 now for the Cardinals. They pitch it over the right side to Howell, looking for some space. Ezra Howell plows forward. Oh, Howell's still on his feet. Something out of nothing. Makes his way up to the now 20. We, got a, we, we also got a flag, got a flag now. That, that's important because if that's against. If that's on Burke, that's going to that, be a first gonna be down. That's going to be a first down, right. Because they'll tack that on at the end of the run. So Howell made his way up to the 20. We'll see what. Oh, Master Pross clapping like, yeah. like it is going to be a penalty against Burke. Oh, face, face mask. Okay. Because of the first, first down. down Big time play there for Madison. Talk about keeping the drive alive. Now you see, he plants, makes a cut back to the middle. Oh, the face mask is right there. Oh, yeah, he got, he got that early. Howell driving to the 19. So now Madison Park with the ball right around the 11-yard line. Make that 10. Yes. Looks like it's going to be first and goal because it's right at the 10. Back up, freshman quarterback. Now on first down, the handoff up the middle to Howell one more time. Now we mentioned workhorse in, in the open, <laughs> and this is exactly what we're seeing because it's all inside running, and which is that's that's what you expect. I mean, you have young players, when you have an inexperienced offensive line, they're not really getting a lot of push, but. <clears throat> Howell just churning those legs has been able to have a decent night. Now Perez is going back in the game. Wait a minute, wait a minute. his knee is, no, he, it's unstable. He just, yeah, see, he, I'm not sure if he should be in. I don't think he even realizes uh, how injured he is. He's just going to hand, hand the ball off. Perez showing a lot of guts going back in there with that knee injury. Yeah, I and right now, Burks, I, I'm sure Coach Beeman's now going to talk to his guys and say, you got to know this quarterback's not going to be able to run at all. So if, if all you see him going all back to pass, just all keep All going to be is a handoff. Matter of fact, Robinson Robinson talking to the freshman quarterback now. He's going to be, I'm he sure he's going to go right back in. Second and fumble seven, the they fumble wow. the football. Perez and has they to have, fall on him. And they have some real emotion, too. Going to be a five-yard penalty against Madison. That's the other thing we've mentioned this before too. When you when you have a quarterback that goes in for a few few plays and the other quarterback right, goes back, come in, back in, the Things cadence is different. Exactly Sometimes the count is different. Play number eighty-seven on the red. We'll be repeating second down. Hey, 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 hey. This is a tough break for uh, <clears throat> for Perez. Second and 12 now for Madison. They pitch it over the left side to Howell. Howell trying to make his way upfield. Spins out a one tackler. And then it's down. He lost the football. They haven't blown a whistle. The referees haven't blown the whistle. And here comes Jeremiah Burt. Down the sideline they go. That's going to be a touchdown for the Bulldogs. Number 38, Stephen Banks. Keeping his head up. Brings it back for a touchdown. Well, the referee is telling Roosevelt Robinson to calm down because he's going to talk to his colleagues. Oh, 
We'll see what the call is. Jeremiah Burke. Very pumped up there, see Perez. Yeah, Perez he's got, he's got it off, yeah. I could tell when he kind of fell on the ball in the last play, he sort of dinged up his knee again. Yes, yeah, it's just very unstable. So. Right now, Coach Beeman <laughs> looking at these refs because don't forget last week there was a play for Jeremiah Burke where there was an inadvertent whistle, oh, and they are giving okay. him a touchdown. They are giving mm -hmm. Jeremiah Burke a touchdown, so Banks with a headsy play for the Bulldogs, picking up the fumble and bringing it back well over 90 yards for the score. So give, give Banks credit. Staying with the play. Saw, saw a loose ball just in case. <laughs> Let me pick this up and run. And Roosevelt is not happy. Yeah, it was a strange play. It, it did look like the uh, play had stopped. Just about all the players in the field stopped. <laughs> well, sometimes you'll see if every player sort of just stops. Sometimes the refs, you know, after a second or two, will well, blow a whistle. Down. Right. But they let play continue. But, it, you know, if, if there was it's no whistle blown ball. and, and nobody ball, was right. down, then it is a touchdown. So another strange play with the Jeremiah Burke Bulldogs, but they – Take advantage and now are trying to tack on the two-point conversion. The handoff over the right side to Gante. Gante. And Howell's there. And he fumbles the ball. He fumbled it. And now we have another Madison player down, too. Can't see who that is. Yeah, we talked about uh, Sebastian Holder, the the freshman number 11. He's the only one who saw the ball. <laughs> but unfortunately, if he went to get the ball, his knee touched. So he couldn't advance it. There's the injured player you're talking about. That's, that's, Ezra, that? that's, Ezra, that's Ezra. Ezra? Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure what happened. Oh, you're talking there. about losing important players. So you're starting mm. quarterback and you're starting running back. On now this is this is how looked like his He def definitely oh, a wow. fumble. He's not yeah. down. Then you see the ball get kicked around. Jeremiah Burke. Then picks it up. There's Banks saying, "Is this play? What? What is? Can <laughs> go, I go? No, can no, I go? There we go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go just in case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very smart play there by the sophomore. Bring it back for the touchdown. So 18 to eight, Jeremiah Burke on top. I hope Ezra Howell's now up on his feet. So that's good. Talking to Coach Robinson. Looks like he's all right. Yeah, really, really strange play. I mean, you talk about changing things around. You had Howell inside the 20-yard line, okay, with the ball. It probably would have been a fourth down, but still you had possession. Instead, it goes back the other way. You got to think things would have been at least a little bit different if Perez didn't get injured. They oh, might have been able to definitely. drive it down and score. Now Madison fielding it right around the 20-yard line. That's one, another one of their freshmen as Kevin, Kelvin Austin is then marked down at the 32. Good job by Austin because that was a bouncing ball. He was able to corral it in full stride. We saw him earlier get a, get a, on a <clears throat> end sweep, get a big first down for them. See Coach Bowes with the assistance for Jeremiah Burke, making sure he is on 12 men on the field. And now take Burke a time calls out. a timeout. <laughs> to to, to recount again. Right. <laughs> I think they only have 10. And then here comes the 11th. Yeah, Never fun being that guy. I'll tell you what, you try to hide your number as you get out there. <laughs> Boy, Perez still in still in some pain down on the field. He's yeah, trying, it's just, he's trying it's just too to bad work he, it off. he went back out because it, on his way to the huddle he stumbled and then started limping again. So the, that left knee is, is definitely unstable. So 
So Madison Park trying to regroup here as backup quarterback. Isaiah Miller now in for the Cardinals. Freshman. A delayed handoff. Here comes another freshman. Freshman yeah, to Sebastian freshman. Sebastian Holman right? again, and he gets it's a first wrestled down. down. Yeah. <clears throat> by Gante at the 45. So another nice pickup there for Holden. That might be one of your, your future pairings is the quarterback. Yeah, switches the uh, ball to the outside arm that he's supposed to. Gets the first down. Yeah, you watch him play in the middle. It seems like he just likes playing football. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like he's playing both offense and defense. Takes a big hit. Bounces right back up. Sometimes with these freshmen, it's just trial by fire. You throw them oh, in definitely. there, and see what they can do. And some of these young skill position players from Madison Park are holding got, their own yeah, up there. Yeah, got some speed. Miller getting a lot of valuable time under center here in the second half. Now on first down for Madison Park from their own 45. They hand off again. And again, it's Austin who has nowhere to go this time. Yeah, we're back to the defensive line of the Burke handling things. That time, the freshman was <clears throat> has progress stops. That's the end of the third quarter. So after a very long third quarter that showed a lot of turnovers and a lot of different scoring, the Jeremiah Burke Bulldogs now on top of the Madison Park Cardinals, 18 to eight. We're going to head to break. When we come back, the, sec the fourth quarter, excuse me, here on Game of the play Week. You want to play again? <laughs> <laughs> Re-rack it. Let's start it all over again. Headsy play here by the sophomore from Jeremiah Burke as he brings this back for a touchdown. That's why they're on top by 10. We're we'll right back for the final period right after these words. We just, we just finished, finished dinner, dinner and, and it was time, time for homework. homework. He hates homework. It makes no sense. I don't know how he finds anything in his backpack. I can't find my backpack. I couldn't even read his handwriting. Holding the pencil makes my hand hurt. I know he's bright. Why is it so hard for me? He's I'm just trying as hard as I harder. can. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. Welcome back to Madison Park High School in Roxbury for Game of the Week. The Madison Park Cardinals trail the Jeremiah Burke Bulldogs by 10. Our sideline reporter, David Souza, has got an update for us. David, what do you have? Kenny, time to go, time to go. Madison Park quarterback, oh, pardon me, Madison Park quarterback Alex Perez has been ruled out for the rest of the game. Back to you guys. Thanks very much, David. Perez ruled out for the rest of the ball game and certainly not what Madison Park wants to hear. Hope some good news when he does get examined because he'll definitely have to get an x-ray. From the 45 yard line, second down and 10. And Howell thought, it, oh no, excuse me, that's Austin with the carry. He's got nowhere to go with it. He lost a couple of yards. The second time we saw Austin just sort of jump out of a tackle. Get thrown to the turf, though. He's, now he's down. Watch Austin. Once he gets wrapped up, he's going to sort of jump out of the tackle, keep his balance, but the rest of the Burke defenders come in. Now watch the end here. He's going to get sort of tossed to the turf. stays down. You know, as a coach too, when you when you have one of these seasons like Burke is having, I mean, like Madison Park is having, when you're short, you have a short squad, you know, really low numbers, 
it just seems like you get more injuries. I mean, with the, the year with you have a full squad, you got you know everybody's first, second string, third string, right? <laughs> right. And they're complaining and, about playing time, right? Of course, <laughs> yeah. You know, they're playing hard in practice. Everybody wants to play, but a season like this is the opposite. You can barely practice hard because you just don't just don't have the numbers. I can't remember the last time I saw, I've seen so many ninth graders uh, playing significant roles on, and, and playing both ways. Yeah, I mean, Madison had just a combination of graduating pl graduating players, a couple of kids, couple of kids who transferred, transferred yeah, right. a couple of kids who no longer just go to the school. I mean, there was just a sort of a, a potpourri of, of reasons well, for kids to leave and... and it, it's Not to leave, different. but to, just, to it's, just aren't it's, on the football team anymore. But Coach Robinson has seen a lot of challenges and faced a lot of challenges here at Madison. But he knows it bounces out. I mean, a year from now, maybe two years from now, All these some of these freshmen are, are juniors, uh, if they stick with it, then he'll he'll have something because he's he, – his offense and his defense, uh, they're really not that complicated. So once you have enough repetitions, you can't help but get get better at it. I mean, we saw we actually saw the defensive end Brandon Henry get better in this game. He got beat for the touchdown because right. he came in the wrong made angle, made adjustments, made adjustment, and then this, the, when they tried the same play for two point conversion, he was able to stuff it. Yeah, we actually saw him later on also wrap That's up right. Colbert in the backfield. So. There's certainly been some flashes of good play here for Madison. That third quarter with the injuries has really hampered them, though, so far in the second half. Now on third down. Well, yeah, they, they, they snuffed that one out. That's, <clears throat> that's the problem, like you said, having the freshman quarterback. You can't use, but uh, you can only use a few plays. That's the same handoff they had for Hold, Holden again. He was clearly being, you got Algonte coming on the blitz. He grabs both the quarterback and then his teammate comes in after that to wrap it up. You gotta wonder if, if the punter might be a freshman too. So now we got a fourth down and 16 for Madison Park. And with down by two scores, they have to go for it here on fourth down. Well, we may see Isaiah's arm. Miller handing off over the left side to Holden. Showing off the speed, Holden trying to find a crease, but he is wrapped up after just a two yard, make that a three yard gain. Nowhere to go for the Madison Park freshman and Jeremiah Burke's gonna take over on downs. Like you said, simple hand out, trying to get outside. <clears throat> One cut, gave some ground, and then by the time he gets up field, Pursuit gets to him. That was Burke play a little shaken up. So Jeremiah Burke will take over at the Madison Park 42 yard line. And we'll just have to try to sustain a long drive and start to kill yeah, the clock. Yeah, kill some here. clock, right. That, at this point, they're, Burke's got to be feeling good about themselves that after going through the entire first half with just that one score. Bouncing back with two scores here. And just as impressive as the defense. I mean, Madison Pox had the problems because of the injuries, but. Give the, give the Burke defense credit. They've stuck with it, and they, they've held uh, Madison scoreless this half. Now on first down, it's cold breath off the option. Got some room. Got some room down the sideline. Beats a couple tacklers. Cold breath. And they're going to mark him down. He dropped the football, but it did go out of bounds. That was a nice tackle that time from Madison Park. Number seven for the Cardinals. You don't have a seven on the roster, but... I think he's one of the JV guys who came in. Ross Colbreth, we always talk about him floating, like gliding, then he'll make a jump, a little, tries a little skip there, and like you said. Oh, he was out of bounds. Yeah, out of bounds anyway. He was well out of bounds. 
But Colbreth with another first down run for Burke. So Colbreth with that run. Tips the scales on the century mark. 101 yards rushing for the Burke senior quarterback. And Gante. it's Andre Gante with a nice run here on first down. Gante towards the end zone. Touchdown, Jeremiah Burke Bulldogs. Gante with a 25-yard touchdown run for Jeremiah Burke. And that should seal the deal. Simple handoff. Let Gante bounce outside. Linebackers overran it. Well, actually, everybody overran it. The safety's <laughs> not there. And it's just a matter of a chase. And Gante shut off his running. And for him, it's, that's, that's the little frustration, too, because he, he, was, he was actually um, held in check most of the game. And he took a lot of hits, too. <laughs> so for him, I mean, it's good. He, that's his what, second touchdown because he had the screen pass touchdown. That's right. So now he has two touchdowns this game. So the Bulldogs now trying for the two-point conversion. They've been unsuccessful in their first three attempts. They throw the pass to the end zone, but Audriel could not hang on to Tried it. Tried for one-hand catch, yeah. <laughs> After running for that TD, he could not hang on to the two-pointer. Nevertheless, Jeremiah Burke up by 16. Here with. Let's watch this again. You see, giving ground. Yeah, actually, he had some he had a nice touch on that, but Dante, like you like said, just couldn't, couldn't pull it in. That's yeah, just too bad that you know, Madison Prop, with all these injuries, they've had to uh, put, put, put some other players, younger players, in un. un familiar positions, just like we saw. We saw them overrun that, that run by Gante. He just made it easy for him. Yeah, certainly tough sledding for those younger guys on Madison as they are thrust into these positions. Well, folks, of course, next week as our season continues here in 2017, we'll be back at White Stadium as the Bedford Buccaneers will oh, be taking on the dual county, yeah. Boston yeah. Latin Wolf Pack <laughs> at White Stadium. That game will be at 7 o'clock next Friday, October 6th. You can watch it live on Boston City TV. If you got Comcast, it's channel 24. If you have RCN, it's channel 13. We also post our, all of our games on our YouTube page for Boston City TV, so you can check that out there after the game is over. But if you want to watch it live, make sure you tune into Boston City TV. Burke now with the kickoff, and Madison Park having a tough time fielding it. Now it's Austin again on the carry. Austin making a couple of nice cuts. Now bringing it back to the outside. Austin. They finally wrestled down at the 44. You. Yeah, I like the effort. Austin also shaking up on the place. Another player for Madison. He reversed his field and was able to hit that sideline. As he's pulled down, yeah, it's going to roll over. <clears throat> Yes, I think they're missing the player. Actually, they, this, the teammates are saying that Austin needs to come out. We're going to take a timeout. Yeah, Austin did do something with his, that left leg. So Madison Park calls a timeout here midway through the fourth quarter. Jeremiah Burke Bulldogs now in command 24-8 to eight on top of the Madison Park Cardinals. And Jeremiah Burke now 2-0 in the Boston South. And, of course, they have some more big games coming up in the league. But, you know, Coach Freeman mentioned that to us last week. He said that the reason that last week was such a big win is because they, they do have a lot of league games coming up. And he sure. wanted them to be in, in the right frame of mind. As a matter of fact, that played into his decision initially to not have Kelbreth play in the second half because his defense had controlled English so well. Right. They were up two scores. He kind of knew what was ahead. And exactly. So it, it wasn't until, well, it, they had a turnover, which, which helped lead to English's score to make it a one-score game. And then Calbreth came back in. But 
he was going to sit out just for that reason. And we can see that in this game, he's back to close to full strength because he was, he was just fantastic. I mean, to me, the biggest play was that, that kickoff return because it oh, set huge. them up set them up for the score, gave them the lead. And from then, they've been comfortable, and it's allowed their defense to play far more aggressively. And, then of course, with the quarterback change, you have a freshman back there who uh, probably didn't expect to play at all, especially not quarterback, uh, simply uh, hand the ball off. Yeah, whenever that, that young quarterback comes in, like you mentioned, oh, you yeah, know, with the younger guys, you got to sit, you got to shrink the playbook down. Oh. And it just sometimes the coach you feel sort of handcuffed because you don't really. Oh, you're have definitely a lot handcuffed. Yeah, and then it's frustrating, especially when the other, the defense recognizes the formation, and they can just run to the spot where the ball is going to be. Now on first down, Madison nice Park holding. It's a ball to the outside with Holden. And he picks up a decent gain there on first down. See, the thing about Holden, he's so small that any time he gets tackled, just like it looks like a big hit. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the Brooke players over there were all excited because he got <clears throat> he got picked up and slammed. But yeah, I think he's going to be there. As a matter of fact, he went in. He's in the backfield now because of the injury to, uh, to Kelvin Austin. So Holden started out as a receiver, went to, to the wing, now he's in the backfield. So Mark Holden down at the 48-yard line, so a six-yard pickup on first down. And second down and four now for Madison Park. Holden. And a botched handoff there yeah. on second down. He has to just keep the football. He had to drive for that from the ball. It's too bad. But he had a little bit of room. That's what happens when you have two freshmen exchanging yeah. the ball there. Yeah, there's a ball bouncing around. So Holden, smart thing, just controlled possession. I don't think we have them again in the schedule, right? We don't have no, Madison not. again. It would be nice to see them later on. It'd be interesting to see, like, after four or five games, how, right. how these guys are starting to gel. I'll do you see them coming back in. That's good. Uh, Austin, Kelvin. Back in. So now they have more of a more of a normal formation. So third down and four now for Madison Park. Here in the fourth about quarter. In game in game coaching. Roosevelt Robinson just put two different linemen in, probably their first time playing. We can see it there. Kelvin gets away again. Austin lost then the loses football. the football and <laughs> he actually Banks had, recovers. He just had it stolen out of his arms. That's going to be a learning point for him because uh, he does a good job of fighting off tacklers, but that time he didn't secure the ball. Watch as he's getting turned around right here. He gets away from that, but just had the ball squirt out of his arm. Yeah, it's, it did not have it secure. That's... Stephen Banks, who picked up the fumble, brought it back for a touchdown, now recovering the He's fumble. He's a nice Friday night, huh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the sophomore who didn't He'll expect to catch He'll the ball, have the ball in his tail, right? Right. <laughs> He'll be the hero on the corner. <laughs> right. He also has eight tackles tonight. So nice game so far from Stephen Banks. So Burke now the football, first down and ten. This one will kill clock now. Like some early movement. No use of the clock tonight, but uh, it's got to be late in the fourth quarter at this time because it's been almost all running. So the clock, uh, the clock doesn't really stop. So they move, move the Burke back to the 45 yard line with the block below the waist. They're on the Bulldogs. Well, one of the coaches told us after the game that the, the, the kids, his kids love the TV, love being on TV. So. Yeah, coach, <laughs> assistant coach Kevin Bowes said, hey, we're actually undefeated when you guys cover our game. So I think the streak's going to continue here tonight. Now we got some more early movement be another, on um, the Bulldogs. We have a fast start on the right. They must have some new players in. 
who are just over anxious. Yeah, definitely. You see the bright white uniforms. Right. So those, those are the ones <laughs> yeah, right. who are just getting in for the first time. And now Jeremiah Burke calls a timeout after those two penalties. As Coach Beeman knows, you know, now that they're they have a good lead, let's finish strong. Coaches right. always talk about finishing good football habits. games. Good habits. Gotta have good habits. So Jeremiah Burke well on their way to a second Boston South win of the season. Well, Madison Park started off the game really well, and that's that's just that tells the tale right there. Well, as soon as it. Uh, Alejandro Perez he wants had to leave down, the game, he played both ways. Also, that's the thing. He was playing uh, safety, so you lose him, you lose pretty much any continuity to your offense because you're talking about a, a freshman as the backup, and literally all all the freshman did was hand off because you, you can't put him in a position that he's totally unfamiliar. I mean, at this point, at this point, we just want to have a situation where the Madison kids, uh, hopefully the ones who got injured, it's not really serious. You, you also see Chris Pierre. You also see Chris Pierre out there. He's 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 limping around, but he's staying he's staying out there. Interior lineman actually has had a decent game. Well, let's hope that Madison can get some of these guys recovered before the end of next week. And I think we got another. I thought I saw a flag fly out. A short game. Just a short game there for yeah. the, the Bulldogs who are winding the clock down here in the fourth quarter. That was uh, Withers. This is the kind of game, and Burke got to feel good about because, like you said, the first half was even. I mean, uh, both defenses played well, even game, and then, as we expected, Kyle Berth got away, a couple of runs, big fourth down run for a first down. Like we mentioned, start the second half with that huge kickoff return. As you mentioned, too, that first half, that's the way that Madison wants to play, right. is those long, sustained Eight drives. Eight to six, you know, and whether you score or not, take time off the clock. The sure. problem is, you get a guy like Kyle Berth on the other side who can score from anywhere, so he doesn't need a lot of time. Second down, a short gain for Burke once again. That's Withers with the carry. The simple handoff plays and use it to help kill the clock, maintain possession, get that, like you said, that second win in a row. I'm still waiting for Avante Withers to sort of break one. You can tell he's got the skills to, to kind of get the ball in space and make some plays. Well, but you're right. You know, you know why? Because the rest of the teams that play Burke, they're going to be so worried about Colbert. He's going to probably fake a run, pitch to Withers, get some open field. But you're right, he, he definitely has the ability, no doubt about that. We also saw him last week come in for Colbert at the quarterback That's right. position. As a backup, yeah. And <clears throat> you thought he was going to be <laughs> at the whole second half, right. but it didn't turn out that way. <laughs> Third and 14 now for the Bulldogs. And they hand it Dante. off to Gante, who's got a nice hole up the middle. He gets the ball down to the 35-yard line of Madison Park. Now grind it out first, another first down. Good straight ahead running. So it'll be fourth and five now for Burke. Again, we don't know how much time's left because of the scoreboard not being operated here tonight at Madison Park. Take the handoff, it's Colbreth again. Looking on the outside, Pat Colbreth escaping one tackle and he is gonna walk in for another touchdown. Pat Colbreth with a 35 yard touchdown run for Jeremiah Burke. Yeah, it looked like Holden had a chance at him but he made the mistake of trying to tackle him high. Colbreth's just too, <clears throat> he's just too strong for that right there. So you try to tackle him high, you can't do that against Colbreth because he's Got those long strides, and the last guy to beat just cut right inside of the block. 
Nice shot by Andre Gante at the end of that run, making the block on the defensive back to give Colbreth that clear path to the end zone. So five rushing touchdowns so far this season for the Burke quarterback. And now Jeremiah Burke looking to attack on the two-pointer. They have been unsuccessful on their first four attempts. We'll see if they can attack one on here. And they have nope. a botched handoff. Two players running might in. Might be a two-point conversion. Here comes Austin. It's all a matter of speed. Trying to bust his way down the field Ooh, and Withers from with a great wow. hustle. Avante Withers saving the two points. And that's one of those type of plays that coaches are going to point out in the film room. Yeah, because you're talking about a 30 to 8 game. Right. Two points in the He could have just let difference. him go. Wouldn't have made a difference in the game. Let but him Withers down. coming up with the great hustle play for Jeremiah Burke. Smart play first by the, the by the freshman to pick it up, and now he knows let me get these two points, but it's Withers showing that. That's, that's the speed you're talking about. You, you, you wait for the break one from scrimmage. And, and, and Austin can run. Certainly he will. He I definitely mean, will. Austin can scoot, and then you see Withers just chase him down. They got to have – they'll probably, at, I think, at some point install like an end-around package for him or something to get him the ball Oh, screen out pass. Space. Yeah, wide receiver screen. You see a lot of those. Like you said, an end-around. You, you know, it's a scissor, scissor play. We're going to have uh, – Another freshman come out. Durian's views. He's out there for the first time. And the return game, number five. So. Seven freshmen on this Madison Park team. <laughs> it's one of those things. Coach Robinson's like, let me blink and let it be a year later. <laughs> <laughs> There's the freshman. There's Buse. Oh. For a nice return. Look at Buse Whoa. with the speed. <laughs> Breaking a tackle. Buse down the sideline. One guy to beat. Once again, it's Withers coming up with the tackle. Oh, yeah. But the Buse. freshman with a nice return. He just went in. He was he was he, he was put in the last second. <laughs> <laughs> That'll make his night. <laughs> <laughs> The toughest thing for a returner is to get into the crowd full speed he and just break out of defenders, it. Right? There you go. That arm tackle slowed him down a bit. That's what allowed Withers to be able to get the angle and run him down. But Cano yeah. Oliver. Yeah, I'll tell you. Down right now for Jeremiah Burke, one of their starting offensive linemen. So a little bit of excitement for Madison Park at the end here. Gotta hope it's just a cramp because of these ways. It looked like after the play, legs. he sort of like kind of rolled over to the sideline. So it might be, it could be one of those cramps where, you know, late in the game. Yeah, that's. that's I think that's what it is. See some of the younger Bulldogs just. Hoping they can maybe get a couple of plays in here. Oh, These two young teams. Very young. Madison Park, very young. After this game, these two teams are now in completely different positions. They were sort of in the same right. spot coming into today, but now Jeremiah Burke. 2-0 in the Boston They're South flying. has a chance. They are flying there. Has a chance to to ascend to the top of the league standings. Now you gotta you gotta think they're thinking about you know making a run at the postseason. No whereas doubt. Madison Park, because they're so young, you don't know what's gonna happen with Alejandro Perez and even Ezra Howell, who got banged up in this game. You're not quite sure what's gonna go on with those guys. And which is I think what Coach Robinson expected. All about teaching right now for the Cardinals. Definitely, and but what what he was he was pretty positive about the fact that he liked how the players do listen. 
They take to coaching. They want to learn because they, they realize a lot of these kids are playing football, not necessarily for the first time, but not a lot of experience, not not a lot of pop one and not a lot of yeah, organization. Organized football. For organized. So they, the good thing about many of these younger kids uh, is that they realize they don't know a lot about football. They want to learn so they can get better. And you, you see the effort that we've pointed out of uh, four or five of the freshmen giving a really good effort, good hustle, and that's what you need, regardless of the score. If y'all play hard, play through it at all times, then that's how you get better. Another handoff to Austin. Kelvin Austin Kelvin. with some slithery speed. Austin inside the 10, down to the seven. Yeah, they just got the two minute warning, so Madison Park just wants to get another score. Austin, we've seen him bounce off and, ha and spin. Got to tuck that ball in, though. There he is, like you said, down inside the 10-yard line. Kelvin Austin now leading the Cardinals in rushing with 80 yards this evening. You see the Burke sideline. On first and goal, they pitch it. This time to Holden, but he is wrapped up in the backfield and lost a couple yeah. of yards. See, Holden got the ball a lot during the course of the game, so Burke is sort of, sort of keying on him. You take your lumps when you're, you're a freshman playing these, this many minutes. We mentioned the injuries for Madison Park, but you got to also give Jeremiah Burke's front seven some credit as oh, they yeah, have they, been able to bottle up these really runners. Well. They, they really have played well. Cornell Mills has had a good game along with, excuse me. Guys like Dalen Pereira, Angel Pena. And there you see Kelvin Austin getting touchdown. in for the touchdown. So the freshman. Breaking the plane for Madison Park. That's his first high school football varsity touchdown. So a nice moment for him here late in the fourth quarter. That's a good way to, to wrap the game up for Madison Park, too. You've got to like the effort. This is, this is all, these are all things that, that the coaches will talk about during the week. Because remember, Kelvin had that, the chance for that two-point uh, return. He got run down. So for him, this is, this is good. Leading rusher for the for the night for Madison Park and also gets that touchdown. It's a good point you're making though. The teams definitely at this point are going in different directions. Yeah, I think that's going to do it here at Madison Park yeah. High School as that touchdown does end the game. Jeremiah Burke with a 30 to 14 win over the Madison Park Cardinals here at Madison Park High School. They improved to 2-0 and in the Boston South, and if you're Coach Beeman, you gotta be happy with the steady improvement that this team has shown each week. You know, they, they started off sort of slow, especially with um, how their team was set up and, and how they sort of didn't have guys at the beginning, enough guys at the beginning of the year in certain Tough positions. first and week, now, they bounce back. And now they you bounce know. back. You, have your, you certainly have your quarterback. <laughs> then you have a couple of running backs. Purpose. You have your you all-purpose guy. Right. <laughs> Who's also he, returning he, kicks. Oh, I mean, making he's, he's hits amazing. as a safety. Yeah. It's just it's, it's a lot of fun to watch this team, but especially you look at Cole Breath. From wherever he plays in the field, he's fun to watch. He's, he's going to be an impact guy. Now, the only question is, in terms of the passing game, as they get into other closer games, uh, whether it's in the city or outside the city, uh, the passing game at some point is going to come into play. And right. that's the only thing we really haven't seen much of yet. We haven't had to because they didn't need it. But sure. when you need it, that's, I should say, a small question mark right now. But he's so, the Colbert is so dependable, like you said, on, right. on both sides of the ball. Uh, kick return, special teams, he can do it all. And, and, what happens is it, 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 it really builds the confidence of his entire team. It's because they know at any point he can make a big play for them. Like he did tonight, he turned, he turned what was a defensive game into, you know, a really wide score. Sure, and broken open. Anytime you talk about 44 points in a Madison Park game, you say, okay, well, that's, 
that means Madison Park, you know, wasn't playing the defense. Right. So, because <laughs> <laughs> over the years, Ro Roosevelt so told us if it's not oh, yeah. a, you know, grimy sort of Black and muddy game, game <laughs> you know, it, that's not that's not how we play. And so, uh, like we said, there was uh, what two point what eight to six at halftime. Madison was in the yeah. lead. Yeah, but, and but then it, it uh, the injuries messed them up, and then the uh, Calbreth and second week in the row we saw him just make huge you know, plays uh, and 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 at some of them he just makes up on his own that's you right know, he can he can you know make it keep a play alive he has speed quickness moves intelligence so i, I mean like you said burke has a chance to um do something in the city and and also possibly look toward a playoff spot yeah, certainly a lot to look forward to here for Jeremiah Burke as they improve to 2 0 in the Boston South. Folks, we're going to head to break. When we come back, we will have the Game of the Week MVP and our final stats here for Madison Park High right after these words. Don't go away. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're going to take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. It's a beautiful day out here, sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay indoors. Come on, that's it, let's go. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. Got a quarter?
Welcome back to Madison Park High School in Roxbury at the conclusion of Game of the Week. The Jeremiah Burke Bulldogs defeat the Madison Park Cardinals 30-14 to and sort of like deja vu. We saw last <laughs> week Pat Colbreth with 181 rushing yards and three touchdowns. A little bit less this week, but still very impressive. 118 on the ground, two rushing TDs, one passing TD. Big he kickoff return. That, oh, that yeah. was that was probably the best play of the game yeah. on either side for Colbreth was that huge kickoff return that set up the passing touchdown. Phenomenal quarterback here for Jeremiah Burke. He is down on the field with our sideline reporter, David Souza, along with head coach Byron Beeman. David, take it away. Thanks, guys. Patrick, you had 118 total yards and you had three total touchdowns. They seem to be containing you well at the beginning of the game. What changed at halftime for you? Well, coach kind of at halftime gave us the speech where you're not playing hard enough, so you got to come out and play hard in the second half. No matter what happened in the first half, it's 0-0 zero, zero after the first half's over. And then going into a game like this, you kind of know that they're going to be game planning to stop you after a big week last week. How do you still push through that adversity and succeed? Well... I don't know. Just gotta keep. He's gotta play hard. I tried to get my teammates involved in this game because I know pretty much on the scouting report what it is. So gotta get everybody involved. And coach, what did you think about your team flip, flipping the switch in the second half and turning things on? Well, I mean, we started a little slow. We started slow. Um, definitely saw um, before the game started. They were sitting over here having a good time. You know, thinking they were just gonna walk in here and win a football game. Um, it's four quarters. Um, and you can never take your opponent lightly. You can't look at film and assume that the task is going to be easy. And I think that they got a little overconfident. We got punched in the mouth a little bit, and we didn't know how to recover until the second half. And you guys had a pretty emotional uh, post-game huddle there. What was that? Um, it's, it's what we say at the end of every practice. Um, it's a mantra that we use, and we, we talk about, you know, um, you know, knowing our story and knowing our power um, and, and really just like being one together because I think that when these guys actually come out and play football for us it's more than just that it's, it's really like a family environment uh, we eat dinner every Thursday together um, we really want these guys to know that they have a place with us you know and it's not just about football and a team win for a team that is a family back to you guys David thanks very much good point there by coach Beeman when he talks about his team not being quite ready to go at the start of the game. And if you, once they start getting more into league play and into the rest of the season, especially if they want to play in the postseason and play well, you have to start off well. Well, that, that well, that's some of that probably comes from the fact, you know, frankly, they haven't had a whole lot of postseason recently, right. in recent years. So none of these players are, are even used to uh, being in the running. You know, for the most part, we've had uh, a few, a couple other teams on top of both the North and the South uh, pretty regularly. If you go back, like, say, three or four years. Right. So what part of Coach Beeman and his staff, part of their, of their uh, main job is to get, like you said, to get their mental attitude right. So they're, they're ready at kickoff. Uh, they're ready to go. And uh, Madison Park was able to uh, stay in. They, they were able to get, get the score. They were, they were up at halftime, but... Uh, the injuries just really hurt him, but uh, Burke has some. They have some opportunities, and any time, especially in high school football, when you have an outstanding athlete like Culbreth, who's your quarterback, who's going to touch the ball on every offensive play from scrimmage, you have a chance. You, I mean, you really have a chance. I mean, it's really good to see that he's clearly recovered from that leg. Yeah, problem. it looks all right, right. to me. <laughs> so if he can stay healthy, uh, he can take them a long way. Without question, the kind of game that he had all over the field. We we mentioned the special teams and defensively. Oh, that might have been hits. even his it's biggest contribution. He, 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 he made he a huge up. tackle yeah. uh, in the second half he there. Doesn't, you know, he, he leaves it all out there. Yeah, like, when you talk to him, second week in a row we've talked to him, he's been outstanding play. He seems sort of humble. Uh, he doesn't, doesn't say a lot. Doesn't doesn't sound like a, like he likes the brag or anything, but he has the talent. He, he does have no question uh, all over the field and – I think Coach Beeman knows that. <laughs> he, wants to, <laughs> right. he just wants to get, get maximum use out of that. <laughs> Without question. It's certainly a lot of fun to watch, and I, it definitely seems like his teammates like playing with him. Folks, let's take a look at the final stats for this ball game before we sign off for Madison Park. High and first up there are the Cardinals stats. Yeah, Madison Park, uh, Anson uh, <clears throat> had the, the early touchdown, and Howell also had a touchdown. Howell, Howell ended up with 77 yards. The tough yards, the 14 carries, he took a beating, but he was able to get some yards out of it. 
Uh, nothing in the passing game at all. Perez only had two. That's the same two attempts he had in the first half. And then, of course, the freshman didn't uh, call for any, any pass attempts. Now let's take a look at Jeremiah Burke's final stats. And you flip it over, Culperth again. 11 carries, 118 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Guante, who had a he had a tough night until he was able to break off that 25-yard touchdown to sort of make him feel pretty good. He had a good defensive night, too. Uh, the one receiving for Gonte had a touchdown on that screen pass, and then Culbreth, that's the only pass he threw, the only pass he completed, a 10-yard touchdown. So Pat Culbreth, three total touchdowns here this evening as Jeremiah Burke with their second Boston South win of the season. Folks, we want to thank everyone for joining us here on Game of the Week. If you want to watch this game again, you can certainly go to our website, www.cityofboston.gov slash Game of the Week. All the games from this season are up there, some games from BNBL season, games from last year. Make sure you check that out. You can also follow us on Facebook. That's Game of the Week here in Boston and Facebook. A lot of good links, a lot of good pictures. Good stuff up there, so make sure you like us on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter, at Boston City TV. And if you want to tweet at us, use the hashtag BostonGOW. We're going to be back at White Stadium next week for Boston Latin School as they host Bedford. But for right now, we're going to say so long from Madison Park High School. We'll see you next time here on Game of the Week. So long, everybody.